How's it going there? It's a Wednesday night. It's, uh, gosh, a little after 8.30, and I'm doing a surprise webcast. Well, if you watch my Instagram lives at all, then you kind of knew for about 30 minutes this was coming, but still a surprise. If you uh, already had plans for this evening, you didn't plan to do this. So anyway, um, we're testing out uh, even more new stuff, new camera stuff. Uh, this new mic, you notice that we don't have the mic with the boom anymore. Uh, hopefully everything sounds really good to you. Uh, I, I can't see who jumps in as, uh, as you come into the broadcast, but I can definitely see your comments. So if you have comments or questions, anything about what we're talking about tonight, then uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, type that in the comments box below. And uh, every once in a while, I'm going to look up to this screen that's over to the side for me, and I will try and field your questions. And uh, I wanted to give you a real quick lesson. Again, this is uh, sponsored by, by my new site, DrumCorner.net. This is to give you an idea of what some of the lessons, especially the live lessons, are like uh, at Drum Corner. And uh, we've, we've got courses there, constantly adding new course material to the site, um, and then for members, we've got these live lessons that we stream uh, weekly where we do these kind of things. I talk about a concept that's either a continuation of a course or maybe something that hasn't become a course yet. And uh, one of the courses that I'm currently working on is how to practice. That seems to be one of the things that a ton of drummers I talk to have problems with. Uh, they either don't know how to practice or how to practice effectively. They're bored with their practice time. They're not seeing results. Any number of problems. Uh, maybe they're just stagnant in their playing and they can't seem to find a way out through the practice room. And that's really one of the main ways that you can get through that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to play some stuff that I don't really know how to play. I don't know very many d drum teachers either on the internet or in person that'll do that for you, but I certainly don't mind. Uh, what I want to do tonight is I want to show you some concepts that I use in the practice room almost every single day of my life. And what I do is I use these concepts to help me assimilate new ideas quicker, uh, get them under my hands a lot quicker, and... Uh, always see constant and continual growth. I don't hit a lot of plateaus in my practice time. As a result, I don't hit a lot of uh, plateaus in my playing because I'm constantly making little strides forward every single day. Now, uh, if you want to see huge improvements, uh, you need some other drum teacher. I'm the guy who shows you how to get a little bit more uh, out of your playing every single day. And the the bigger thing that I want to convey to you is I'm the guy that's going to show you how to get more musical things under your hands and into your ears every day so that you can be more effective with the music that you have to play with other people. The stuff that we practice in, I, I practice some things in the uh, practice room that I would characterize as uh, self-indulgent, but uh, they're only self-indulgent, those few things I practice that you'd consider that, they're only self-indulgent until uh, they find a musical home. And uh, But I would say 90% of the stuff that I practice, there's a very clear goal that I have musically that I'm trying to uh, steer toward in some of the gigs and the sessions and the things I'm doing. Maybe it's uh, I'm assimilating uh, a particular drummer that I really like and starting to look at uh, concepts and um, exercises that steer me in the direction of a signature player. Uh, tonight, the idea that I'm going to show you is one that I've had a ton of problem with um, all through the years. And that's linear playing. If you don't know what linear drumming is, very simply, linear drumming is only hitting one surface at a time. So uh, we're pretty uh, versed in being able to hit two surfaces or three surfaces or four surfaces at the same time. Uh, very often when we're playing a groove, we're hitting the hi-hat and the bass drum at the same time, or the snare drum and the hi-hat at the same time, ride cymbal, crash cymbal, all that stuff. The, the main thing that we do that could be considered linear would be anything that we do, say, in a drum fill or going around the drums. Um, and that's probably the closest that most drummers get to anything somewhat linear. And I would say 80 to 85% of the drummers that I see play, uh, when they get into that area of the drum set, 
don't go much beyond singles and doubles. Uh, just pure single strokes and maybe a few double strokes. If you're lucky, uh, you may see a pair did a lot of them. But uh, the concepts we're going to talk about tonight are definitely going to stretch us beyond that. And um, let's get into it. No more preamble. I'll just t show you exactly what we're doing. So the first thing I want to do is lay on you my first concept in terms of how I practice new ideas. And that first idea is that we're going to limit the amount of stuff we're going to practice. Now, uh, these are three ideas that if I were in the practice room, I, I might take 30 minutes on these three ideas. That's 10 minutes per idea. And I may see that uh, for the first two days, I may see that back to back, day one, day two. And then I'll generally skip a day on a new concept, come back to it on day four. But what you don't see here is an entire page of ideas. Now, I can't take credit for uh, what, this, what this page is. This actually comes from uh, page 20. If you're going to study linear drumming, uh, you know, I could sit and I could write patterns. I'm smart enough to write patterns. But uh, what you want to try and do is look and see if there's some canon there. See if there's some stuff uh, by teachers and players that has already been battle tested and, and proven to be musically effective. And uh, this comes from page 20 of Linear Time Playing by Gary Chafee. So this is, uh, again, I, not that everything that I practice comes out of books. But in the case of something like this, when I'm going to linear drumming, um, this is probably the first person that I'm going to start to look at. Uh, all of the greats that I love, uh, in one way or another, have studied with Gary, whether it was uh, Vinny Coliuta or Jonathan Mover or Steve Smith or any number of other players. And as far as these concepts of linear drumming and, and teaching them in an organized fashion, Gary's sort of home base for that kind of thing. So those three exercises you see, if you if you do have this book, you can look right on page 20. It's the first three exercises. Now, uh, one thing that I can tell you is there's a lot more to practice in this than what you see on your screen right there. But uh, I just wanted to give you those three. We're going to reference those this evening as I'm practicing these ideas in front of you. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll start with the very first idea. So uh, earlier today, I did actually practice a little bit of this earlier today just as it was written, but I'm going to stretch beyond what's comfortable for me as we do this. And so if you look at this, uh, this figure, I'm going to play this figure really slowly for you, uh, looking at it as a linear concept. It's just right hand, left hand, right hand. We've got right hand on the hi-hat, left hand on the snare drum, uh, a right hand, a left hand, a right hand, a left hand. Now you'll notice there's an accent on that fourth note. So the first one of those lefts is going to be small. The next one of those lefts is going to be really big. I still have my mic on, so I won't do that yet. But uh, So the first thing I do is I do what I call chunking. And I'm going to take this first chunk, which is this, this first beat. The, the line, if you don't read really well, may look uh, intimidating. It's really just two one beat chunks that get repeated. So the first the first chunk is this. That's it. Pretty easy, right? If we're doing accounting, it's a uh, one e and a. Uh. The accent is on the a. Uh. Now for the next chunk, we've got a right hand, two really small left hands and a bass drum note. Looks and sounds like this. By themselves, they're not really all that intimidating, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm looking at here, I've actually got it in a couple of places. Um, I'm going to take this, and without a metronome, without anything giving me time, I only want to get comfortable with this under my hands and feet, in the order that it is going to go, and with as much of the dynamic content as I can handle with my hands. So uh, this is what this is going to sound like really slow and somewhat out of time. Now, depending on the idea, sometimes that comes out nice and even. Other times, it's uh, it can be <laughs> a hot mess. But uh, 
Uh, thankfully, you know, I did practice this a little bit earlier today, so that part of this is, is under, my, under my hands and feels somewhat com- uh, comfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that idea and I'm going to play it without the metronome really slowly, and I, I'm going to just do those two chunks. And I'm going to put a pause. I'm going to do the two chunks again, and I'm going to try and gradually shorten the pause to the point where I can keep the time really, really solid. So eventually it's going to end up with a steady pulse, though it may not at first. So once I get to that point where I can get a fairly consistent pulse happening, then I'm going to turn my attention to the dynamics. How much of that written dynamic can I affect? And I may even play around with the dynamic. I may go for a louder or a softer hi-hat. I may bring up or bring down those ghost notes. I'm just trying to find ways to make it feel really comfortable in my body at that tempo. And I'm not going to speed up. I'm not uh, tying myself to strict metronomic time yet because my focus is not on that. My focus is on making this comfortable. And then beyond that, once it starts to feel comfortable, then I'm going to start to listen to what I'm playing and try and hear the musical phrase that those notes make in that order. So I'm going to play it a little bit more and let's see if you can hear the musical phrase that these notes create. All right, it's feeling comfortable. Uh, I, I'm starting to relax a little bit. Uh, since I've got a, actually a camera here that I can see my that side view, I'm starting to, as I get comfortable and I'm hearing the musical part of this, I'm starting to look at my posture. That's one of the things I'm concentrating on a lot more these days is my posture. I tend to kind of lean in and down a little bit. And after about three hours of solid play and say on a gig or something or a session, my back will start to hurt. So I'm trying to Not only am I trying to keep my back from hurting, I'm trying to get it where I can breathe uh, with a more relaxed way of, of, of breathing. If I'm hunched over a little bit, I'm compressing my diaphragm a little, so it makes it a little harder to breathe. So I'm just kind of easing back a little bit, trying to keep my back straight, and, uh, and play this very, very comfortably. So now, before I hit the metronome, I'm going to see if I can get a little more tempo on this, and I'm going to see if I can get a little more comfortable with it. I'm only using my own internal clock right now. It depends on how strong your internal clock is. You may or may not uh, be playing this very well in time. That's not the objective yet. The objective is just to get it under your hands and your feet and to get some semblance of comfortability with it and some semblance of evenness. Uh, try and nail the dynamic as consistently as you can. So I'm going to play it a little bit faster and see where that takes me.
Now, here's one reason why I do that and I get fat a little faster this early in the game. I'm going to notice some natural tendencies. One natural tendency I noticed is I tend to either ghost or almost drop too softly that E of the first, the first chunk. So that, that first <laughs> tends to either, either I'll just, just miss it because I'm too soft or, uh, or it's just too soft in general. It doesn't match the rest of the inside notes. So I'm going to make sure to bring that E out. And then I also noticed that uh, for now, uh, the objective is to keep the hi-hat the same volume. Uh, right now, I'm tending to put a little bit of an accent on the downbeats. It's just a natural thing for me to do. I want to get rid of that right now. Later, we'll bring it back in. It won't be hard to do once we get, get this really cemented. But for now, I want to try and get that out. I want to get that tendency out. I want to play the, the phrase as written. Now, um, what you don't see, and I'm not going to really bore you with here, is I'm going to play that for three to five minutes without stopping. I'm just going to play it, and I'm going to listen for those tendencies, listen for how it feels. If I, if, if I notice something that I need to retool, I'm going to retool that as I'm playing it. But then once I get through that three to five minutes, then all of a sudden, I think I need to turn this little gate down a little bit. All right, so once I get through that three to five minutes, then I'm going to put it to some strict metronomic time. This is where we find out how well I can play that idea in time. So I'm going to pick a really, really slow tempo. And you may have to go slower than this, depending on the idea that you're working on. This is 50 beats a minute with a, a 16th note click. Here we go. And I'm already going to tell myself, that's too fast, bruh. Let's go back down to 40. Yes, 40 beats a minute. I'm going to welcome you to rewind that on the taped version of this, the replay version. Because if you'll notice, at first, it didn't sit really well with the click. I didn't have the time cemented. I was in and around it, but I, I definitely wasn't cemented to it. The more I played it, the tighter it got to the click. And what I'm trying to do is get it to a point where I really sound like I'm locked in with that click. Make sure that those two doubles aren't getting compressed and that the second note on the and of two is a little fast. I want to make sure I'm not compressing those. I also want to make sure I'm not rushing this. I may even just take that one little chunk of the first beat and the first note of the second beat and just play that just to make sure that I'm not rushing those single strokes. It sounds, you know, when I tell you it's just single strokes, it sounds like, Oh, this will take you about four and a half seconds to learn. But when you start to look at your tendencies, most people are going to find they're going to rush those. And then they're going to drag, uh, they're either going to drag that diddle on the left hand or they're going to compress it and it's going to push into the next beat. So uh, I'm going to sit there for three to five minutes at 40 beats a minute just on this idea. And then I'm just going to move it up in increments of five beats a minute. And if five beats a minute is too much, uh, this metronome goes in one beat per minute increments. I, there are times when I've gone from 40 to 41 to 42 to 43. I won't bore you with that today. But.
I'm here and then I'm pushing a little bit into beat two. So I'm going to relax getting into beat two. When I started thinking about it, I flubbed on the two diddles. <laughs> uh, at this point, I'm trying to just get comfortable and relax inside of it and trying to really just feel what each note feels like as it rolls out. That E of one, that's where, I, as, as I got more into it, I tried to loosen up and relax a little bit. I started focusing my attention on the E of one. How's the E of one landing? And then when I got that, where I was pretty satisfied with it, then I looked at E and and beat two. And I uh, want to make sure that that wasn't compressed, that it was landing well. So I'm, I'm going to slowly move through, since I did actually practice this one a little bit before our stream, just to make sure I'd be comfortable with it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump up to 60 a second. All right, so I'm going to stop myself. The first thing I notice, the first beat is always a little suspect. So my concentration is going to be, can I make the first beat as strong as everything that happens afterwards? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a couple of bars. I'm going to stop, and then I'm going to start again so that I can really nail that first part. If that first part is an issue, then I'll, I'll pare down the chunk and see if I can work on just a smaller piece of, of that two-bar chunk. But let's see if we can clean up and make more consistent. The very first beat, the first entire beat, Going into beat two of every song you play is the most important because it sets up the feel for everything that happens afterwards. So I want to make sure I've got that. All right, so I'm just working that one idea, and I stop every once in a while and make sure I can get that first beat to be consistent and correct. <clears throat> once I can get to where I consistently do that, then again, three to five minutes, just playing it back to back until, it's, until it becomes a part of my muscle memory. It's early in the game, but it's starting to become a part of the muscle memory. Now, uh, what I might do at that point if... Uh, if my objective is to play from the book on those three, I may stop at 60 beats a minute. What I don't have sitting here with me, because I moved it just a second ago, I'll write that in my notebook. So I, um, I got 
exercise number one on page 20 from 40, started at 40, and I went to 60 beats a minute. That's where I stopped with that one. Then I would go to number two. So let's take a look at number two real quick. With this exercise, the thing that's uh, a little bit tricky with this one, the first beat is the same. The second beat is really just single strokes between the hands and the feet. The right hand hits the first, uh, the first note of beat two. Then we've got the foot. Left hand hits the next note, and the foot hits another. So without the drum set, we're playing, uh, we're playing hand, foot, hand, foot, hand. Sounds easy when I tell it to you like that, but then we have to put it on the drum set. Completely different thing. The first one is our regular hi-hat note. The next one is an accented snare drum note. And oh, you heard me yell muscle memory a while ago. Uh, my muscle memory from just 30, almost 40 years of playing at this point is to always hit a bass drum on the downbeat of one. The thing that's uh, really odd to me about these exercises is there's no bass drum on one. So when I stop and I go into that exercise again, the general tendency is for me to want to hit a hi-hat and a bass drum at the same time. It's a pretty normal thing. Uh, pretty normal thing for most anybody. But uh, in this case, uh, I've got another natural tendency that I immediately uh, notice that I'm going to try and get through as, uh, as I do this. Now, if that hand, single stroke hand foot thing is a problem, I may just loop that. Now, I, I, in my body, I don't feel comfortable with that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bridge between the two chunks. I'm going to play the whole first chunk and the first beat of the second chunk. I'm going to create a little bridge between those two chunks. A lot easier when you do that instead of trying to fumble around with getting that second beat seated. Now I'm just going to stack on the next note in the series, which is the bass drum. And it's not comfortable in my body yet, so I'm going to slow myself down a little. Again, normally, if I weren't doing a web stream, three to five minutes on that thing. And so uh, I would go through the exact same process we just went through with that exercise. I would uh, just play that exercise um, alone, get a little bit of speed, uh, not a ton of speed, but more for comfortability. Then I'm going to put it with the time. And uh, at that point, if my objective is to get through those three and I look up and I've taken as much time as I give myself on the clock, I'm done. That's it. I can write it down in my book that I got exercises one through three up from 40 beats a minute to 60 beats a minute, and they're fairly comfortable. I may record it so I have 
uh, a record of that, a visual and an audible record of where I am with that so I can see the progress later. Uh, but then I'm going to leave it. Now, the other, the other thing that I do, if I get to an idea that seems pretty easy, if I got number one fairly easy, the first thing that I'm going to do in this session before I drop this idea and move to something else is I'm going to create a variation on this idea that I know is going to be uncomfortable for me. So playing this idea with the hands crossed, kick snare hat, um, that's a position we play in a whole lot. So for linear ideas, for some people, that's not a difficult thing to assimilate because we're in this position a lot. But maybe I don't play a lot of linear ideas with my hands open. So what I'm going to do, because I know it's going to be a problem, is I'm going to take that hi-hat note, and I'm going to put it over here on this 12-inch tom. And I'm going to play the exact same thing of number one, but I'm going to play it with my hand on my right hand on the 12-inch tom. Now, I'm, I'm doing what Gary intended with this book is to get off the page. The page is the start. That's one of the things that uh, sort of... Uh, with, with when I when I ask a student, uh, you know, what books have you worked through? What methods have you tried? And they say, you know, I've worked through Gary Chester's New Breed. And I say, you've done the whole book? Oh, yeah, I've done it from uh, top to bottom, uh, completely uh, from the first exercise to the last exercise. I'm like, really? You've really done that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, how long did it take you? Oh, it took me about maybe two months. Maybe I got through it in about two months. Um, I've been practicing Gary Chester's New Breed now for 30-something years, and I'm still not anywhere close to halfway through that book because of the way that I practice. And so um, it's, it's this kind of practice where you get off the page and look at the other possibilities that open up what the book is for or what any concept is for. That This linear concept is not just for grooves, or groove variations. This is for getting us around the drums in this kind of movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something very uncomfortable for me. I don't play feels like this at all. Not a single one. Hardly ever. I'm going to put my uh, right hand over here on this 12-inch tom. And I'm going to play that exact same idea. Not only is the sound going to be different. It's going to feel different under my hands. It's going to feel weird having my hands open now. that drum being out of tune for me knocking it around today driving me crazy but i'm gonna so i'm gonna chunk i'm gonna do a chunk with a bridge i'm gonna play a chunk and i'm gonna bridge into beat two to see if i can get that smoothed out
Let me put the right exercise up so if you just tuned in, you know what the heck it is I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to put in the overhead cam too so you can kind of see it there. I'm going to move to each drum. Every one of these drums feels different. It sounds different to me. Again, I don't play this way, so it's, it's a new thing for me. Just deciding to bring the whole dynamic down flipped my wig on this. So I'm going to take a second to get a different dynamic range going. All right, so uh, without the metronome, I was able to get to where I could do one entire uh, two-beat sequence here, 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 and here. So two bars all the way down, two bars all the way up. Uh, I may uh, do a sequence where I do one, three, two, four, get them out of sequence. So I don't just run into having to go straight up and down uh, with that idea. I can mix it up. Uh, ooh, that one's really out. Uh, these things are getting new heads tomorrow. Maybe we'll live stream. Sorry about that. Woo, that one's out too. Uh, Y'all forgive that. And sorry, Evans, if this is a bad representation of what your heads sound like. Uh, these things are beat in, boy. Um, yeah, new heads are coming in tomorrow, so we're going to live stream the new heads. And uh, you're going <laughs> to... <laughs> we'll turn that into a hangout session, I guess. I'll, I'll change top and bottom heads on all these all these drums. We'll turn that into something fun tomorrow. So, um, but I think you get the idea at this point. Uh, once I get comfortable with that without the metronome, I'm going to do that exact same thing with the metronome. I'm going to go back to 40 beats a minute. Uh, one reason is that the toms take up more space. They take up more of the air in the room than the hi-hat does. So not only do we have a pitch that makes this sound different to my ear and a position that makes it feel different to my body, we've also got uh, each one of these notes has a little bit of a sustain to it. In this case, is a little out of tune sustain. And <laughs> so I've got to focus past that. For me, when these things are out of tune, it's really distracting. And so um, I've got to, I have to focus past that thing that's bothering me and uh, listen to the length of the note in relationship to the phrase and make sure that the length of each of these toms doesn't change how I'm playing it in time. That's what I worry about when I hit it with the metronome. Let me do that real quick and see if I can. Mark it down. Put it in the book. I was able to do it, uh, you know, uh, one cycle of that idea on each drum, going up, going down. 
Uh, I'd write it in my book. That's, that's what I accomplished at 40 beats a minute today. And that, uh, that really, really does a lot to get me towards my objective, which is to be able to uh, play more of these linear ideas, to play in this linear fashion, and to play with an evenness and a purposefulness. That's uh, one of the things that I see. One of the places where you see this linear drumming is if you, if you look at a lot of the gospel chops guys, they're pulling a very small piece of uh, this overall style of vocabulary. There's, it, it's a really small piece of the language of linear drumming that a lot of those guys are using. If you look at someone like a Vinnie Coliuta uh, or a Dave Weckl, they're pulling from a much, much bigger uh, understanding of the language of this uh, linear drumming. Uh, Dave Garibaldi is another one that if you check him out, there's a lot of linear stuff in, the, in what he's doing, and he's pulling from a very large uh, swat of... Uh, the language as well, and and they're doing it incredibly comfortably. And so those are some of the players that I'm looking at as my barometer for. Okay, now we're in we're in the ballpark of having a handle on these concepts. And this might take me I, on these three particular ideas. Practicing it this way, this may be the only three things I practice from this set of things section of my practice time this isn't my entire practice time for the entire week it's one section of it it might be 10 or 15 minutes of my practice time uh three or four times this week um the other thing and we'll talk about this in in the how to learn how to practice uh course that's that's going to be on that's going to start on drumcorner.net in january is uh i don't practice this every single day I have, um, there's a lot of research that goes into uh, rest periods and allowing your brain to work on something past you physically working on it uh, or you mentally working on it. Uh, Unconsciously, your brain continues to work on these concepts if you learn them the right way the first time. And that's going to be the key. So much of this slow and deliberate and do it right the first time is about training your brain from the start how to do this stuff right from the beginning. If you move through these, uh, through any of these new concepts that you're practicing too fast, you're going to adopt some bad habits and some things that you're going to have to unlearn later. And so you want to teach your brain to learn it the right way the first time. And as you gradually increase the speed, as you play around with that dynamic range, as you move it around the kit with any new idea, you want to really hold a high bar for what the correct way is to play something. Now, later, after you really get it under your hands and your feet, you can stylize it however you would like. It doesn't matter. You can uh, do any number of things with how to phrase these new concepts once you get them into your ear and you get them into your muscle memory. But um, but the first rounds, sometimes the first weeks and months, uh, sometimes years of uh, some of these concepts really entail just being very slow and deliberate with it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I don't see any questions, which is a great thing. So either nobody is watching or uh, <laughs> I explained it so well that uh, you don't have any questions. But if you if you watch the replay and you have some questions, uh, feel free to put those in the comments below. I'll answer them personally just as quickly as I see them pop up. And uh, if you don't already subscribe to me on YouTube, make sure you go to, over to YouTube. It's just brianstevens.com slash YouTube. Click the subscribe button and ding the bell to get notifications anytime there's a new video. And then also, um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm pretty much uh, easy to find everywhere. But uh, if you go over to Instagram, it's just instagram.com slash Stevens or at Stevens on Instagram. Uh, I'm doing some things in the live uh, section of Instagram that I haven't been doing uh, anywhere else, uh, including something cool that uh, that I got today that, that came in the mail. So check that out. Uh, and then if you're not already uh, following my official Facebook page, it's just uh, briansteves.com slash Facebook. Like that page and you'll get notifications every time something new hits. Right now, um, a lot of this content is going to my personal page because a lot of the people that follow my content mainly follow me there, uh, but slowly it's going to uh, gravitate away from that and onto these more uh, official properties. So if you really dug uh, what you got there, uh, I want to make sure that you know about this. Uh, take the bug off of that one. 
If you want to get more lessons like this, you can go to drumcorner.net. Uh, drumcorner.net is a site that I started a, a little over a month ago, and uh, we're adding lessons to it every single week. We're doing live streams every single week. Starting in January, new courses open up that you can begin to take, and um, it's just like right now, I think it's 20 bucks a month maybe if you do it month to month. Uh, starting in January, it, well, for the first year, probably we'll keep it at 25 a month. Um, but then as we get more into 2021, there may be some other options for higher or lower engagement for more or less money. You never know. Anyway, thank you so much for all your time. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you got something out of this. And um, that's all I got. Hey, John, how's it going, man? Yeah, definitely rewatch this later. There's a lot of meat in there for you. Um, Thank you for jumping on. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, a lot of meat in, in this last, I, I don't know how long we've been, we've been going now. We've been going for, gosh, 45 minutes. A lot of meat in the last 45 minutes. A lot of stuff you can go back and watch. So thanks for uh, stopping by, John. I appreciate it. Your package is going out tomorrow morning. John won the uh, uh, the Modern Drummer Festival 2008 box set today that uh, we gave away. Uh, we're going to be doing, I'll do a live stream again before this weekend where we'll give some more stuff away. So if you haven't won anything yet, make sure that you uh, tune in anytime I'm doing some live stuff and I'll let you know when we're going to give things away and how you can enter yourself into those drawings. So uh, anyway, uh, that's all I got for you. <laughs> Dude, it's gonna, you're going to love it. It's going to be awesome. I've got a copy of it myself and uh, I rewatch it all the time. There's a lot of good stuff on, on that uh, box set. Uh, anyway. Until next time, I guess I will uh, get over to this other page. Until next time, I guess I will see you when I see you. Later.